Well, hello, I'm Dr. Shante Haynes with Heart Heart Truth Ministries, and it truly is my pleasure to bring you these transformative biblical truths of making sure that I encourage you with the word of God. The word of God is so rich that we get this encouragement that will keep you throughout the rest of the week. So let's jump in and bow as we begin. Most gracious and heavenly Father God, you are a wonderful God. Thank you for being an on-time God. Thank you for being a right now God. Thank you for being an ever-present God. And we need your presence. You said where two or three are gathered, you're right there in the midst. And even though I don't see those on the other side of this, God, you know we are gathered. Speak to our hearts. Give us a word of encouragement today. Help us to continue to move on. Help us to do life the way you would have us to do it, Lord, so that we might have and obtain every single promise that you have in your word. God, we come listening for you to speak, and we just ask that you do. In Jesus' name, we do pray and give you thanks. Amen. Well, first and foremost, let me say God bless you for those who have been going through the entire I'm Building Something series, and this is part 11, so thank you for staying with me in this as we travel through the book of Nehemiah. Uh, and it is a rich book. We are on chapter number 10 today, and I'm going to read some parts for you today. Uh, Nehemiah chapter number 10, I'm going to start at verse 1, and then I'm going to skip to verse 28. In verse 1, it says, those whose seals were on the document were, and it identifies the priests in verse 8, it identifies the Levites, verse 9. It identifies the leaders, verse 14. Now, remember, in Nehemiah chapter number 9, we were praising God for all the things that he has done. So now, dropping down to verse 28, the Bible says, The rest of the people, the priests, the Levites, the gatekeepers, the singers, and temple servants, along with their wives, sons, and daughters, everyone who is able to understand and who was separated or has separated themselves from the surrounding peoples to obey the law of God, they join with their noble brothers and commit themselves with a sworn oath to follow the law of God given through God's servant Moses and to carefully obey all the commands, ordinances, and statutes of Yahweh our Lord. Verse 30. We will not give our daughters in marriage to the surrounding peoples and will not take their daughters as wives for our sons. When the surrounding peoples bring merchandise or any kind of grain to sell on the Sabbath day, we will not buy from them on the Sabbath day or a holy day. We will also leave the land uncultivated in the seventh year and will cancel every debt. We will impose the following commands on ourselves to give an eighth of an ounce of silver yearly for the service of the house of our God, the bread displayed before the Lord, the daily grain offering, the regular burnt offering, the Sabbath and new moon offerings, the appointed festivals, the holy things, the sin offerings to atone for Israel and for all the work of the house of our God. We have cast lots among the priests, Levites, and people for the donation of wood by our ancestral house at the appointed times each year. They are to bring the wood to our God's house to burn on the altar of the Lord our God as it is written in the law. We will bring the first fruits of our land and every fruit tree of the Lord's house year by year. We will bring the firstborn of our sons and our livestock as prescribed by the law and we and will bring the firstborn of our herds and flocks to the house of our God, to the priests who serve in our God's house. We will bring a loaf from our first batch of dough to the priests at the storerooms of the house of our God. We will also bring the first fruits of our grain offerings of every fruit tree and of the new wine and oil. A tenth of the land's produce belongs to the Levites, for the Levites are to collect the one-tenth offering in all our agricultural towns. A priest of Aaronic descent must accompany the Levites when they collect the tenth, and the Levites must take a tenth of this offering to the storerooms of the treasury in the house of our God. For the, Levi the Israelites and the Levites are to bring the contributions of grain, new wine, and oil to the storerooms where the articles of the sanctuary are kept and where the priests who minister are along with the gatekeepers and singers. We will not neglect 
the house of our God. I'm going to say that last one again. We will not neglect the house of our God. Well, today in part 11, we're going to talk about the fact that notice there was a significant commitment that they were making. They were committed to covenant, committed to covenant. As I read through that, notice that they were going back to the law. And let me just say from the very beginning, we all seem to want the conveniences as well as the comfort without commitment. We live in a day and age where people are no longer committed to doing their jobs and completing their jobs, but instead we want to stop halfway and then change the game. We don't want to stick to what we signed up for. We want to turn around and we want to leave. We want to be kept or taken care of without considering what we're taking care to do. Mm. And that brings me, even in the commitment phase, um, I am reminded that just coming up in the next two to three weeks is going to be 18 years that I've had the wonderful opportunity to do hospital ministry. And this is how this started was hospital ministry, going into the hospitals and bringing some spiritual encouragement on a regular basis. Now, I didn't say 18 times, like once per year, but I'm talking about 18 years of 52 weeks every single Sunday that we had an opportunity. Now, it didn't start because it was, oh, just some wonderful thing to do. It started because my daughter was in the hospital and I was suffering from having that encouragement, that spiritual encouragement enrichment that I needed. And so in many instances, when we have an agitation or an irritation, it is a sign of something that God wants us to do, but we need to be committed for as long as he would have us to be committed to do it. Now, I am the first to say that I am kept. Just like we talked about last week, I am praising God for everything that he has done, all the opportunities that he has brought my way, the quantum leaps that I see standing in tippy-toe anticipation of what is yet to come. The manifestation is coming and I have asked for all. I've asked for so much from him, but that means that he requires much from me. The Bible records for us to whom much is given much is required. Now, last week we talked about all the praises that we were sending up and just how good God has been. And in the 10th chapter, this commitment is signed, sealed, and delivered by so many. The priests and the Levites and the leaders signify, sign on the document, sign on the document, the dotted line. They're identifying what they know to be true. See, commitment requires a signature and the signature identifies that you know and that you are committed to what's in the document. Now, I'm a big proponent. I used to be a, a purchasing agent that you read every single word before you sign your name. Okay, let me just say that one again. Read everything that you are committing to before you commit to it, before you put your signature on it. Because your signature is saying that I have read it and I'm agreeing with it. Just like when we say amen to, to different things that people are saying, we're saying so be it. We're signing our name to it. See, the leaders signed because leaders are identified as people who have influence. They are over something and you are over something. You're over your business. You're over your household. You are over something and you have a responsibility that when you commit to something that you're going to follow through. If you own a business and you're saying that this business is glorifying God, then you need to glorify God. You need to act like you're glorifying God in everything that you do. Covenant our covenant, our commitment, our agreement with God is not contractual like we would see here on earth, but a covenant agreement that God makes with us. He's saying, I am going to do this. And he reminds us, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. I change not. He stands by his word. Every word, every single promise is available to us. So the people then in this instance 
how they've seen all the blessings and they just praised him. They jumped, they shouted, they had a hallelujah praise party. And they said, wait a minute, we're going to commit to you, Lord. And we're going to commit in four different areas. Notice in the Bible, they committed to marriage. Marriage is an institution that is designed as a witness for God. God instituted marriage. We don't get to decide how we want it to look. And I'm just going to say that one again, put it right there. It's in the word. I'm not going against the word. God's covenant says it's between a man and a woman. And this instance, they said, we're not going to let them intermarry with those who don't believe. Be not the unequally yoked. How can two walk together except they be in agreement? All of those things come into play. And they said, we're going to commit that we're going to be a people, that we're not going to give our daughters to marriage outside of this. And we're not going to even allow our sons to take daughters. We don't want them to be unequally yoked. We want the covenant to stay intact because if our sons are the leaders of their house, they need to lead and not then go to other gods. Too many have gotten caught in that trap because you look so good and you talk so well and you did all of this and you kept me and you no. That's not the reason to be in a covenant relationship with someone else. I've seen too many women devastated because they are no longer in that same covenant relationship. They signed up for until death do us part. And then the person decides to part because they saw somebody else that looked a little bit better to walk down the street. I know too many men that have been left as well because they were good men and that someone wanted to go sow their wild oats. Agreement, a covenant. Marriage is a covenant relationship. And I'm not going to stay here, but you know what the word says. That Maybe we'll talk about that in the, the podcast of when it is okay um, to leave. But I'll just say it here. God does hate divorce, but he does give some stipulations on when it is acceptable. When God says, you are my child and I don't want you to suffer any longer. The second covenant that they identified is the covenant of the Sabbath. I'm not going to buy and sell on this particular day. I'm going to make sure that I let the land rest. I am going to honor you, God, and I'm going to trust that you will provide. That's what they are saying here. Do we trust him? Do we yield to him? Do we lean not to our own understanding? Do we discern the fact that God says that I am your provider? I am your protector. I will make sure I take care of you if you will but trust me. Honor me. Hmm. We remember the Sabbath day and we keep it holy. And that's what they said they're going to do. Not only are we going to have that covenant of marriage, but that covenant of our Sabbath rest, our Sabbath holy day we honor. Too many have just gone astray. And even though um, pandemics come through, we decide that we're not going to assemble any longer. We assemble in different ways. And I'm not saying that you have to go to a specific house, but you need to be in fellowship with other believers. And you are going to overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony testify to someone of the goodness of God, have conversations about how great he is, fellowship with one another, and don't forsake that. Sabbath, I am going to rest. I'm not going to just work seven days a week and 14 jobs within those seven days. I'm not going to just do that. He says, I'm going to rest because I'm trusting that God, I don't have to be on my grind. I need his grace instead. <clears throat> I'm not going to have to grind so much. He can bring me quantum leaps because I believe that he loves multiplication better than he loves addition. So we don't want holes in our pockets because we don't do this third one, which is the giving. <laughs> he says, acknowledge me. Acknowledge the fact that I'm the one that gives you the power to get well. Acknowledge the fact that I can make all grace abound in your life and I can keep the hand of the enemy away from you and I can make sure that it's not holes in your pockets. I can do those things for you because I will keep you. I am your provision. I've given you the vision and I'm going to give you the way to get there. But you got to trust me. You got to acknowledge who I am. You got to recognize that I'm God and circumstances and situations can come in, but I'm still the Lord. 
I handle it. But the fourth thing that they said was in covenant, they wanted to make sure they gave offerings. And they identified several different offerings. But the biggest point that I want to make here is that last verse, that last sentence that says, we will not neglect the house of God. We're not going to neglect it. Yeah, we're going to give our tithe, but we're going to give an offering too because we want to make sure that at this house, this house is a house where people can come and be changed. This house, this house will be able to extend a hand out to those who are in need of saving and we are all in need of saving. We in this house, the king's way is that we show the way. We are light and salt in this dark world and you, our light and salt in this dark world. So I'm just going to remind you of just some key things that I wanted to bring to your attention. Three things specifically. We praised him in Nehemiah chapter number nine for what he has done. Then we need to commit to him and commit to the covenant in Nehemiah chapter number 10. See, our heritage says that no weapon formed against us shall prosper and every single tongue that rises up against us in judgment, he shall condemn. That is our heritage. That's what we get. That's part of our covenant. But we can't count upon that, that we're more than conquerors. We can't count upon that, that all of this is available to this us. Every single promise he is going to keep unless we keep covenant. First thing, follow God's principles and continue to prosper. Many of us have been following his principles all along. And I want to encourage you to continue to follow those principles. That's why you have been prospering, not just abundance income, not just the profitability of it, but the wellness, the good journey, the peace, all of that is part of prosperity. And we want to prosper. In Exodus, the Bible records for us all of these different commandments of what we should do. But the Bible tells us in Leviticus chapter number 11, verses 44 and 45, it says, be ye holy for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Follow me, follow the things that I've given you. And I'm going to commit to you all of these things. Even when you weren't doing right, I still committed to this covenant. This is what I want you to do. Follow after me, my principles, and I'll make sure that you prosper. He will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. Follow what I tell you. The second one, acknowledge the benefactor, not just the benefit. See, we praise God and sometimes the, the tendency is to worship the thing that we have been given the benefit, the blessing. But he says, don't exalt that benefit or that blessing over the benefactor. God is our source and everything else is a resource. And yes, we thank him for the children that he has given us, but we don't exalt those children over him. We don't then take them to every single game that does it on a Sunday, if that is our Sabbath. Because, oh, I need to make sure my children are in every single place that they need to be. No, I need to be in worship. They need to be in worship. They need to know about the God that gave them to me. And we hold it dear. Thank you, Lord, for that. In Exodus, the 20th chapter and the third verse, he says, you know, I am the Lord, your God. You shall have no other gods before me. Repeat it again in Deuteronomy chapter number five, verse seven. I am the Lord, your God. You shall have no other little G gods before me. Don't put any benefit. Don't put any blessing. Don't put anything that God has given you above him. That's the first commandment. No other gods. I wanted to remind you also of Isaiah, the 45th chapter in the fifth verse. He says, look, that's who I am to you. Make sure you go read those passages and be reminded. The third thing that I want to bring to your attention is the fact that we should not neglect the house of God. And that's kind of an easy one to do in many instances that we see so many people who are neglecting the house of God. There are people who work in the house of God and they've been hurt by the house of God. But even though you might have been hurt by the house of God, that does not mean that we should not 
recognize that there are places and spaces within the body of Christ that are doing things right. Those that are making sure that are truly in covenant, that are doing what thus saith the Lord, we should support. We want to support them so they can and we can be the hands and feet of Jesus. We support different ministries to make sure that they can continue on with the work that they're doing. If they're going to meet with the sick, we want to be there. If they're going to meet with the hungry, we want to be there. If they're going to meet with those that are incarcerated, we want to be there. If they're reaching out to those that have been disenfranchised by this world, that have been abused and hurt, we want to reach out to them to let them know that Jesus came. He died for them and he wants to save them. That yes, there's sin in the world. There enemies around and there's warfare everywhere you turn, but that is not the heart of God. And we want to make sure that we do that. I wanted to remind you that we're responding then to God's goodness and his grace. The thing that I want to bring to your attention is Second Corinthians chapter number um, nine, Verses six through eight is one of them that we're not neglecting the house of God. I'm going to do the New Testament and I'll go back to the Old Testament because I knew you were going to say that I was going to the fact that into Malachi and I'm going to go to Malachi chapter number three, um, verses eight through 11. I'm going to read that one in the NIV, but I want to read this one as well. Second Corinthians chapter number nine, verses six through eight in the King James Version. And it says, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he has purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. All. all was my word for this year. And even in that, I recognize the fact that we seek God's kingdom first and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto us all. We want the comforts. We want the conveniences. We want to be kept. We want all the promises. But he says, you need to keep my covenant in order to do that. Malachi 3 and 8 says, will a man rob God? Yet you rob me, he says. But you ask, how do we rob you? In tithes and offering. You are under a curse, the whole nation of you, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, saith the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your field will not cast their fruit, says the Lord Almighty. I'm going to read verse 12. Then all the nations will call you blessed for Yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. We have the opportunity. We have the blessed benefit of being in relationship with the Lord. We can be committed to being a part of that covenant. We want the blessings of the covenant. Then we need to do what the covenant asks us to do. We follow the principle so we have the prosperity. We walk in everything that God has given so he asks us to stay in covenant. That is the God that we serve. The one that says, you know, I'm committed to you. I need you to be committed to me and trust me in the things that I am doing in your life, even though it might not look like the life you expected. So let's bow that we consecrate ourselves unto the Lord and be holy as he is holy. Let's bow. Most gracious and heavenly Father, God, we do thank you. We bless you. We honor you. For you are truly a good and a holy God. God, you change not. You have always looked out for us. You have always provided and protected. You are our healer, our deliverer, our champion, our king. Thank you for saving us. But Lord, we know that you've got assignments for each and every one. Help us to be so committed to you 
that those assignments come to fruition. Whatever you have desired for us to do, Lord, help us to commit even wholeheartedly the more today. We consecrate ourselves to you. We want to live according to the way that you would have for us to live. We want to follow every precept and every principle, every statute and every command. God, we want to do that because you told us in your word that your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Help us to get in the word, God. Help us to understand what your word says. Help us to see you more clearly, follow you more nearly, and just love you more dearly. God, help us to do it in the the best way that we can so that others will see that our light and then glorify you, that they will see we are salt preserving them and glorify you, that they will recognize it. They will know us by the love that we show to others, even when we've been hurt before. God, help us to get over the bitterness. Help us to not be resentful. Help us to not be jealous. Help us to not compare ourselves to anyone else. Help us to not emulate or imitate someone else, but God, help us to be all that you have called us to be. Help our voices to rise above the noise, Lord, that they will hear you. They will see you. They will follow you. and They will love you just like you have loved us. Oh God, we want to be committed to the covenant that you have placed. Sure, Old Testament might have identified the Ten Commandments, but Jesus reiterated, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And when we do those two, all the others follow suit. Help us to love you, God, with all. And then help us to love ourselves and help us to love our neighbors. Oh God, we're gonna be so careful to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory for you truly are worthy. You are worthy. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray and give you thanks. Amen. Well, God bless each and every one of you. I pray that you are encouraged by this word, that God sees you, he knows you, he hears you, and he's backing you up 100%, that you know that you're in covenant relationship with him and he is going to stick by that covenant. Have an absolutely fantastic rest of your week. I'm Dr. Shantae Haynes with Heart to Heart Truth Ministries, helping you put feet to your faith so that you can walk victoriously. God bless. Find us online at shantahaines.com. That's C-H-O-N-T-A-H-A-Y-N-E-S dot com. We are a division of Heart to Heart Truth Ministries and Heart to Heart Truth Foundation. Donations are welcome at shantahaines.com backslash foundation. At Heart to Heart Truth Ministries, we're helping believers live an abundant life based on God's word, standing on his promises, walking out his principles, sharing with God's people, serving as unto the Lord.